there's Larry's auntie. Hey, hey. welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. He gets so happy for silly stuff. I love it. Um, welcome back, everybody. We're recording. And let me just double check. Are you on Facebook? Can you see us okay, everybody? Please let me know if you could see us okay. I'm going to double check Facebook now. It looks like we are a okay on Facebook as well. All right, it's your girl Anaya A, and we're live for another great episode of our Economic Crisis Initiative. We've been going a whole year strong. You know, myself and my sister Mimi were supposed to figure out the date we started, but that's okay. We'll be back with that information very soon. In the interim, we have many special guests with us today, and it makes me feel really good that here on ECI, you're joining us on Zoom and you're right here in the building. So without further ado, I'm gonna let the beautiful people in the room introduce themselves first, and then we will go right to our team via ECI on Zoom, wherever they are, they will share more with you. But for now, we have Miss Zoe and Miss Victoria in the building, and we also have your uh, holistic brother, the doctor, the ambassador who's here as well. He'll reintroduce himself in a moment. For now, share, share, share everybody. Tell a friend that we are doing ECI tonight. We'll let these beautiful ladies introduce themselves and I'll be right back. Come on, sisters. Thank you, thank you, Miss Anaya A. Thank you to everybody. And I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. I am Victoria Falk, award-winning CEO of Passion and Travel Incorporated. And I just wanna share with people that travel is an $8.3 trillion industry. Black and brown people are the biggest consumers of travel, collecting a lot of receipts. Figure out how to be an owner, cut out the middleman. There are benefits to ownership, as far as tax breaks, as far as income earning, as far as fabulous lifestyle. Just because it may not be something that you're accustomed to doesn't mean it's not real. The whole point, I love it what you're all doing here tonight, giving this wonderful information. Everybody has great information to share because business ownership definitely has its privileges. I started working at age 14. I had one of those jobs. I worked from age 14 to age 40 and I paid my dues and it felt really good to retire from work at an age that I can enjoy life and be healthy and enjoy lifestyle to have my own. And even if you, know, you don't wanna leave that job, it's not a problem, it's nothing wrong with having a job but the most powerful person with a job is the person who has a business on the side. So whether or not you have a part-time business or a full-time business, get that business people because black power is business ownership. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Miss Anaya. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we have Miss Zoe also in the building and she's already ready. Hello. Aloha. She Hi. should have a lay on. <laughs> Right, I got my travel dress on, and um, I am, oh, and I got one of these things. Hey! <laughs> um, so yes, my name is Zoe Gordon, and as she did say, um, the most powerful person is somebody that has a job and also a business, and I have both. I am a community liaison with Senator Brian Benjamin, and I also just started my business as a, um, holistic care person where I sell body butters and scrubs. Can I be your model? I'm sure you can. Hey. So yes, and everything <laughs> is infused with black seed oil, flax seed oil, vitamin E, and it's very great for the skin. Um, I have lots of different flavors and I too, I too have, you know, hopes and dreams for this business to grow outside of it. I don't like to call my business a small business. I rather call it a growing business. Yes. So, um, I am all for what you guys are doing, educating the black community on what we can do to sustain wealth and be stronger people in the society as I know that we can. And I look forward to hearing all the information you guys have for tonight for as long as I can stay. Cause unfortunately as a business owner, you have to do stuff for your business yes. to thrive so i'm just happy to be here with you guys and i'm happy to see all the faces and i hope this reaches so many people that they learn and grow and just become part of the family of wealth because as she said there's plenty of money out there we just got to get our hands on it that's it thank you Ms. Mm -hmm. Zoe. and last but not least in the building we have other people that have joined us but in the building we have another great great person live 
Yes, Hotep family. Um, I'm Bekwe Adigun Bomani. I spent today organizing for the Marcus Garvey celebration, um, August, the week of August 17th. We'll be having a program in New York, in Harlem on the 14th um, on economics, education, okay. and Marcus Garvey's task or dream. And on the 17th, we'll be having a parade from Marcus Garvey Park around Harlem. So I spent today doing that. And of course, one of the things that I do is day trade and teach a few of our people how to trade. Not many of our people, not many black people know how to enter this trading world, how to manage or handle this trading endeavor. Um, so that's one of the things that I do. And I wish everyone, well, we are going to have to find ways to create businesses as it is over 75%, I think close to 80% of our people who work in this mm. country work for government related jobs. Keep in mind that many of the government related jobs is now computerized. When you pass through the tolls and realize those of our people who used to be taking tolls aren't working there anymore. You pass through the train stations and realize many of our people who used to be on the boots mm. aren't there anymore. Many of the things that we depended on through the government isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. going to have to find ways to pull ourselves together, mm -hmm. to love our blackness. Yes. Um, yes. We are going to have to find ways to love that blackness that we carry and find ways to build for our children and grandchildren. And I know we are in a biological war that folks have decided to reduce the world's population especially our population as we look at many of our leaders around the world who oppose this vaccine seems to be leaving us mm -hmm. faster than they should mm -hmm. um time will tell the the, the the relationship with with the with the white nationalist white supremacist organization and this virus vaccines that they're, they've imposed. But family, have a good evening. Thank you, sister. Real Bye. quick, if anybody wants to join you that day for Marcus Garvey Day, because as you can see, we have the red, black, and green represented hard. Where can they find information or join you? Look at Larry, excited, yes. I want the info. Yes, we want the info. Um, number three, four, seven. Can you come down so they could hear you, please? Three, four, seven, nine, six, one. One one four six again for them three four seven nine six one 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 four six. We're going to be assembling at Marcus Garvey Park on the 17th at 5 p.m. and then having a parade in Harlem, you know. Um, and we are going to be doing a few other things, excellent. So, thank is there you any again. advertisements for that, like online or like a flyer? You know, we that could possibly pass around. We are working on it. We are working okay. on it. And it's okay. the 14th. Today is the 14th of August. Of August. Uh, you know what? August. Don't start with me, Larry. Okay. About August. I just wanted to make sure. So give us a couple minutes, guys. Um, thank you so much for those presentations that were done in-house. Mama Brenda, we have one other woman I want to share. Um, and then we can let the men take over. Go ahead, Mama Brenda, who's live with us now. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Great. It's good to be back with you all once again. Sorry, camera. I'm a member of the National Action Network, and I'm a member of the Crisis Unit. That's how I met Anaya. Well, before I met Anaya. <laughs> I mean, before, before the Crisis Unit, I met Anaya. That's right. And I became a member of her group. Thank you so and much. And that's all the information I have for you this evening. And she's an active member in making sure that we all smile as much as possible. She's a great light and a, a great source of love. And uh, we're gonna hear more from Mama Brenda because we got more work to do, right, Mama Brenda? Yes. Yes. You say so. Abby <laughs> <laughs> signed her up. Or yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Perfect. So then we're gonna go around. Okay. Your room. Thank you. You're welcome, beautiful lady. We're gonna go around the room. Dion, we're gonna let you go last since you have your presentation, but let's hear from Dan because Dan has to leave very soon. 
Dan, do you want to unmute yourself? Oh, Dan says hello. He can't unmute himself now, but that's all right. We will make sure we, uh, you know, read off his messages. He is not able to be audible. No problem. Larry, introduce yourself, please. I'm Larry. I'm just here so I don't get fired. You know what, sir? You ain't getting fired. Don't start. I'm like Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fired. Lord, help me pray for these people, okay, on tonight. I love all of you. Okay, you don't want to get fired. <laughs> Peter Pushaw just joined us. Oh, my God, we got a hot team tonight. Whoa, Peter Pushaw's here. Real quick, Dr. Exima, please share this evening who you are, and then we'll let Peter go. Dr. Exima, do you want to um, unmute yourself, please? Maybe he is not able to unmute right now. Peter Pushon. His audio is still his audio is still connecting. So now he can talk. Okay, no, Peter Pushon is new with us tonight. Peter Pushon, please share who you are. Welcome. Hello, hello. Naya, Naya. Oh, hi. Who is that? How are you doing? Yeah, Exuma. Oh, Dr. Exuma, and then we'll come back to Peter Pushaw. Go ahead, Dr. Exuma. Uh, hi, Peter Pushaw. Um, I, I happen to know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so happy that you are here with us. And um, as you could hear, my name is Pierre Exuma. And uh, I have background in uh, the medical field, but I'm also a, an entrepreneur. So I'm um, doing entrepreneurship because I think that there is much more that we can accomplish. And I also believe that we can, we don't only have health disparities, but we are also have financials and, and housing disparities in this country, especially here in Brooklyn and mm. uh, in the Bronx. So um, I'm happy to be here tonight to uh, listen and be able to bring my modest contribution to the discussion. Thank you, Anaya, for doing this. I think it's a great. Oh no, you you muted yourself, Dr. Exima. We 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 lost you. Uh oh. Okay, maybe maybe he's not able to uh, finish his statement. Okay, Dr. Exima, we heard um, the contribution part, and then you you we left we lost you. Peter Pushon, why don't you take over? Introduce yourself while you're driving through the streets, sir. Peter, can you hear me? Oh, we lost him. Dr. Ashley just now joined Now you have us. Dr. Ashley. I guess we have a lot of Haitians tonight. Yes, we do, because I shared it with the community. We're going well, to- Well, I got some for them. Don't you start, Dion. You better love my people. Go ahead, Dr. Ashley. Hello, Dr. Ashley. Maybe he can't speak as well. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, hello. hi Dr. Ashley. Yes. Yeah. Hi, please introduce yourself uh, to I the cannot... people. And turn your camera on. Dr. Ash. <laughs> Hi. Oh, there we go. Hi. 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 How are you, guys? We're good. We are having the economic crisis initiative tonight, as we've been talking about. Please introduce yourself and let the people know some of the great things that you're doing in your community. Why don't you do it for me, Anaya? <laughs> oh, Lord. This is Dr. Okay. Ashley Pierre. Just introduce myself. Go ahead. Oh, you want me to do it? Yes. Okay. This is the one and only Dr. Ashley Pierre. I don't see Sancha Etienne, but that is how we know each other through beautiful Sancha Etienne, who we have every week with us here on the Economic Crisis Initiative. He is a great leader in not only activism, but in the mental health field, as well as just a number of um, things that he focuses on in his business. And as a doctor, he helps the young people and he's just great with the resources. And he knows a lot about the stock market. He also has a few uh, ventures that he's working on, which he can share more with us when he wants to. I think I did an okay job. Did I do okay? You did a great job. You did a great job. 
Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, as you know, I'm on my way to your place. Yes. Okay. And I'm stopping by in uh, Albany. Uh huh. And uh, so I'm taking just a minute to to get part of the meeting. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Pierre. Um, we're so excited that you're here. So we've had several people already introduce themselves and we're excited because we want to push forward in regards to the economic crisis initiative. And um, we have our first member who uh, has been with us from day one, Dion J. Powell, MPA, the Honorable Dion J. Powell, who is going to be talking to us about business opportunities, grants, funding, and things of that nature. So Dion, why don't you take it over as I make a couple of calls to see where our people- Wait, 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 wait. You're free, or, or not, you're freezing up. You have to get, you get the ability to share my screen. Am I freezing up? Am I freezing up, guys? Can you were you freezing me? up a few times. What is it? You were freezing up a few times. How about now? Am I good? Yeah, your your sound your your sound is not synced yet. You, you know, whatever Wi-Fi or thing you're doing at the office is not Zoom is too pulling too much energy out, and you probably have too many platforms like Instagram, and Facebook on the computer that's pulling all those. I have three right. phones. My name me, is. And I have other well, people's phones. Go ahead, Dion. Are they on Wi-Fi too? If those phones are on Wi-Fi too, that's also a problem. I yeah, still no. can't share my screen. Go ahead and let me go ahead and get this screen share. Share who you are, sir. I just did multiple screen shares and share who you are and do your presentation, please, sir. All right, yes, because I might have to get up at eight and come back on. All right, okay. I'm Dion Powell from the Bronx and um, I have a company, but anyway, on the Economic Crisis Initiative, I share a lot of community resources. I'm also a county committee man of the 79th Assembly District here in the Bronx. So, um, you know, I'm the civics comes first and then economics. Because without civics, economics can be a billionaire thrown in jail by the government, like in China. So that's why you have to come up with real civics, the ability to create change rules in economics. I just want to give two promos here, if I might. Well, the first thing I want to do is give a shout out to my friend, Carlos and Manny. And I know there's a lot of Haitians online, but we have the new and exclusive Dominican coffee that's going to be hitting the streets on the other side of the Espanol, the Dominican coffee. Also, my man Manny also is doing sound. So if anybody needs a sound guy for their, you know, their events and activities, let me know. I also have a third announcement because we have back ticket to Haitian side. My minister, if you can see my screen, Reverend Dr. Brian Rivera at our church. Uh, we have, because I've been to Haiti before on a missionary trip, you know, helping out. We're going to have a special mission um, report from our missionary on the ground, Leslie Graham. He speaks Creole and Spanish. So my minister is very about um, social justice and, you know, economic development, civics. So he's very in tune to politics, governments, and, you know, initiatives around the world. So this is happening this Friday. I hope you guys can come and support online on Facebook, on his Facebook page. Now let's get it, shall we? The first thing I'm gonna talk about here is businesses, right? So the first website I want everybody to go to is SBA. There are a lot of entities out there that do things to help businesses, even though some of our business owners have been burnt before. So SBA's website, if you Google SBA funding programs, if you Google SBA funding programs, you should get to this website. And this website is gonna give you a whole bunch of information on um, grants and how to start a business. And if you already have a business, cool relief programs. And here on the bottom, as you can see grants for community organizations. As we said on previous episodes, about nonprofits and faith-based organizations that are black owned and controlled, this would be an excellent resource for you. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to take it to is overall to I'm going to go to New York now because this is a uh, the main feature for our viewers. Now New York City has its own score, and score is like a bunch, it's an organization where a lot of retired business people and volunteers you know, join forces to mentor and help businesses, okay? And um, I think Dan said his microphone was off. No, Pierre said his microphone was off, but he'll be back later. All right, so this is uh, another website. So if you're from New York or New York City area, 
Google New York City score and coronavirus funding, if you want to be more specific. And it comes to this page. And on this page, it's updated every so often with all the grants and resources for your business if you have one. All right, PP loan, we all know that's you know, whatever. But there's a lot of other organizations and entities that have monies to give out. There's New York State programs, as you can see here, where New York already came up with its own fund, like the PPE for the state. And then the city also has a lot of resources here, both public and private monies. Of course, IRS, this usual IRS stuff. Now let's get to the money. I mean, I don't love money. I just tell people where it might be and how to get it. But Black people, don't be scared of paperwork and compliance, okay? Because that's how you get these things and be consistent. But here are some organizations and entities that are actually giving out the business grants, all right? So it's a for grant and not loan. I promote grants. But if you see a loan with a loan with forgiveness, a lot of people don't know because I have a contact SBA. Anybody that received the PP loan, in order to make it free, you have to apply for the forgiveness. Don't just assume that things are going to kick in. It's another extra layer of bureaucracy, but make sure you put in the paperwork to have that forgiveness. That way, you know, I won't say free money, but it's money that I believe is owed to you. See, Brooklyn has its own resources and grants. Harlem, as you can see, the Bronx, so on and so forth. The Black People, Global Fund, and then there's crowdfunding. And one of the things, I'm glad I came across this, it reminded me, Kiva, all right? Anybody that has a business, Kiva is an excellent crowdfunding course. Crowdfunding is basically like something like GoFundMe. Everybody knows GoFundMe, people chip in. But Kiva is the best, in my opinion, because I found out from it from the Harlem CDC, which educates Kiva is actually a website where people can donate to your business as a loan as their interest. Let's say you have a business here and you want people to invest in Haiti or from another country or over the world. If your idea is good enough, you go to Kiva, you put your idea, and you're borrowing money from all over the world for people that believe in your idea. And then at a later point, when your business becomes successful, you pay that money back as their interest. The only fee there is if you don't pay the money back at the agreed upon time or date. So this is a great resource as a loan for people leaving your product, you borrow the money, as their interest, you pay it back, okay? Um, so I'm glad I came across Kiva. Now, the next thing is, once again, I gotta make it up to national. So anybody else, SCORE, once again, nationally has its own website. So SCORE.org is for anywhere in the country, because, you know, Larry's big on that, because New York is all these you know, perks, but. This is a national organization. So if you or whatever you are in the country, go to SCORE, contact them through your local chapter and see what business grants they have for you know, businesses and also trickles down to nonprofits as well. Okay, now here's the, here's the secret sauce that Dion's gonna give you for free because Dion is a consultant. Dion, actually I wanna promote myself right here because I'm not, hey, she gets to do it, so I'm gonna do it myself. This is my website. If anybody needs me as a consultant, it's called nyconsultant.us. This is my website. And my company name is I'm a Kleinberger, German Jewish company, whimsical name. And you can contact me if you want any of my services as a consultant. As you see, I'm back consultant, and I'm giving all this information out for free. But you won't be able to do it without me. So you might want to call me and hit me up to help you with these grants. Now, here's the secret sauce. Now, one of the important things across the board that's hard to come by. It's a grant writer, it's a writer all this paperwork, gets money in. So one of the things I want to do when I ran for office and still do is create a grant writers association of New York City that black people control. Because whoever controls the grant money of New York City controls New York. Because nonprofit is an industry. Nonprofits aren't free, it is a business. So one of the things I tell people all the time, if they need a grant writer, come here. Upwork has some good links to grant writers for hire, right? And also there's a new website I saw here, these other two, which is, you know, if you Google, I'm sorry, if you Google how to get an inexpensive grant writer, these websites should come up. Upwork, where you get a freelance grant writer for your business or our fee or anything of that nature or nonprofit. It is also Thumbtack, as well as Grass Efforts Info. But be careful, there's a lot of scams out there too with grant writers. But make sure you know your rules, YouTube how to videos, and um, yeah, also plenty of classes and webinars for free, except for, okay? So that's my spiel for today. Any questions, comments whatsoever? Anaya, back to you. If 
if you're still here. Around Thank you so much, Dion. As always, Dion is always sharing a wealth of knowledge. Does anybody have any questions for Dion in regards to the business, in regards to the money? Um, we have people in the building. Anybody want to know anything else? Fred, welcome back, Fred Joseph. Okay, Anaya. Thanks. Yes. Please um, tell the people who you are since you weren't able to before, and then we'll open it up for questions. I know Larry got questions. Go ahead, Fred. Take it over. All right. Uh, I'm just going back, and I, I don't know what happened about the situation because I saw that there's something go on the screen. What did, can you okay. So we, well, I wanted you to introduce yourself before you zonked out. You didn't even tell the people who you were yet, and then you had to go. Hey, so I'm Fred Joseph. I'm living in New York City. OK. And that's it? Uh, I'm a teacher. OK. That's OK. No problem. He's shy. So what you just saw was the presentation done by Dion J. Powell, Honorable Dion J. Powell, who is my right hand man for the Economic Crisis Initiative. And he was sharing information about grants and funding um, and what we do every week. Oh, Fred, Fred, you're on mute or were you talking to us? No, I'm on mute. Oh, OK. Good. Um, okay, perfect. So um, what we do every week, Fred, and for those that are watching that are just tuning in and things like that, is we come together as a community and we share information. What's happening in our Black community especially is we know how to buy, we know how to spend, but a lot of times we don't know how to save or invest. So this platform is for us to build ourselves up. We can't help anybody, especially those that are in Haiti, unless we have money ourselves. So I started this platform over a year ago when I realized black people are not stupid, black people are not poor. We just have poor spending habits and saving habits. So therefore I started the economic crisis initiative. Dion and I were already working together on the Anaya A show. I have a, a show every uh, day that I do. So because we were already working together, we reunited for the economic crisis initiative. Mimi, who's not on tonight, um, she's a part of this platform. She's been here with from day one. Brenda Doc, who you'll see her name as well, has been here from day one. And we have a lot of new faces in the place that you're going to meet as well. We meet every day on WhatsApp. We try to talk, share information. One of the things that we're going to go back into doing is more of this investment thing for a little while. Every day we we're talking about the um, uh, Robin Hood or like, you know, the stock market and things like that but we've kind of dwindled off a little bit, but I would love for us to go back, especially with somebody like Dr. Ashley, who is a professional. So okay. that's- Okay, can I, can, I, can, I, can I get on for just a second, Mimi? I mean, not Mimi, Anaya? Sure, give me one second, Dr. Pierre. Did anybody have any questions for Dion before Dr. Don't Pierre to jumps turn in? Your camera. He doesn't have to turn on his camera, Dion. Yeah, but uh, Anaya, do you understand? No, no offense, but do you understand that if these people don't turn their camera, then the show won't be complete on Facebook, meaning that nobody sees them or know they exist. That's fine. They hear the voice because I can't force people to put on their camera, especially if they're busy. Remember, Dion, we are starting a new platform again, and a lot of people were not aware. So they're busy, but they're trying to come on. So if they can't turn on their camera, I'm fine with that. Um, of course, we want people to turn on their camera, but Dr. Pierre is traveling anyway. So no questions for Dion. Dr. Pierre, go okay. ahead. Okay, um, All right. well, before uh, I need to apologize. Oh, wait, wait, Dr. Pierre? Oh, wait, yes, I have yes, two yes. Dr. Pierres on here. Oh my God, I'm sorry. You didn't notice that? <laughs> That's oh my God, I'm, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> wait, who, which Dr. Pierre was talking to me? Now I'm so confused. I am the one who was trying to talk. Oh, okay. uh, 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 do I see another Pierre, uh, Dr. Pierre Exuma? Yes, uh, Exuma was, was also had something to say, but go for it, brother. No, 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 no. I give it to you. I give it to you. Oh, sorry, guys. So, which I don't know how I'm going to do this. So, I'll say, Dr. Okay, whatever. Exuma. I'm a Pierre okay, too. No, no. I'm a Pierre too. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get it together. Dr. Exuma, we're gonna let Dr. Exuma. All over the places. So, Dr. Exuma, we'll call Dr. Exuma, Dr. Exuma, and it will call Dr. Ashley Pierre, Dr. Pierre. So I don't get confused. I apologize. Go ahead, Dr. Exuma. Call me Dr. Ash. 
Dr. Ash, I got you. Okay. okay. Yeah. We got so it. So basically, yeah, um, I just wanted to apologize because I don't know what happened at some point. I was like uh, uh, finishing off and uh, my mic turned off. I tried to turn it back on, but uh, it oh. took me a little while. So um, I'm back and I was done basically with the introduction. So now um, uh, what I've seen uh, talking to a few um, leaders in our booking community, because we had a problem with a particular um, local elected official. Mm. That there was an article that came in um, the Asian Times which Correct. is like a um, could, uh, yeah, daily newspaper online here in Brooklyn. Uh, it was about uh, some um, spending issues, like uh, elected officials were spending money with, um, not within their communities, but they were spending money or giving uh, grants and other uh, opportunities to other communities uh, that were not even under their ju jurisdiction. And that was a problem. So uh, one question that I, when I had a chance to ask this uh, particular individual, it was, why is this happening? Why you are, is it favoritism or is it um, that something else? I don't know what it was because these people happen to be uh, Jewish and other um, um, uh, minority communities, but not Haitian. And that person happened to be a Haitian and uh, also in a community where it was like a melting pot. That's true, mm -hmm. but it's there for everyone. But why uh, we had issues getting the funding that we need. Correct. So basically his, his response was that, well, sometimes the structure, the organization of some of the businesses do, did not allow him to give them funding. So sometimes he would require some documents and we wouldn't be able to present them. Um, so my question for Dion, in his area, speaking about grants, is that the same reality that you uh, uh, we are facing in the community uh, as uh, African Americans? Uh, do they have the same issues when it comes to funding? We have a yeah in the building from my sister Victoria. Dion, do you want me to chime in or do you want to take it? Unmute yourself, please. I'll answer for Dion. Go yeah. ahead. No, I'm not gonna answer for Dion. I'm not gonna answer for the honorable Dion. Okay. But... Go ahead. Well, I, <laughs> let me say this real quick. Um, okay, I far... found it. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I, okay. I know you're very passionate about this issue. Yes. But we're going from Brooklyn to the Bronx. I already know. I, I have a few uh, uh, usual suspects of Haitian descent in Brooklyn that do does these kind of activities, but in the Bronx it's a little bit different because in the Bronx, your second language is Creole. I mean, in Brooklyn, your second language is Creole, but in the Bronx, our second language is Spanish. So when it comes to funding, you know, it could be tricky. It appears as though that the Latinos get the bulk of the budget, right? Our borough president that just got elected, no, our Democratic elected borough president candidate that most likely will be the borough president is the first black woman ever, or first ever. black borough president ever. So hopefully in the future, more attention will be played to African-American, Afro, continental African community and beyond. Remember, their primary language mostly sometimes is French. And I talked to a few Haitian leaders, elected officials in Brooklyn. I said, well, if I ran for office, which I did, I said, well, we need to have a Spanish as a second language program and a French as a second language program because unfortunately in New York City, the Latino population gets a lot of resource and amenities, but our African brothers and sisters that speak French that come here is sink or swim. If you know what I mean, I'm sure the Haitians feel the same way yep. in Brooklyn. So I want to get both populations together. So to answer your question, brother, in the Bronx, sometimes the surface it seems that way, but I will say this, our local elected officials that are blocked do give to black organizations. However, the problem is there's not that many people stepping up to have black organizations. Just like there's not that many people stepping up to have businesses. I understand, you know, people don't are timid to start a nonprofit or timid to start a business, and we're the poorest ever, so we don't have the people don't have the knowledge, education, and resources, access to leadership, ownership, and capital to make these things happen as black people. But I will say this: on the African side, they do have a lot of businesses and nonprofits, 
and they are, you know, with the immigrant experience and you know, drive, do get these resources and the budget. Not as much so as the Latinos, but then you got to take consideration the most of the Bronx is Latin. One out of three residents in the Bronx is Dominican. So hopefully you guys don't feel so way. But anyway, so hopefully I should have question. But in Brooklyn, yes, it was very blatant. It even reaches the Bronx to how certain Haitian elected officials did cater to constituency. Let's not just say Haitian, let's just say the constituency outside of a district with their discretionary funding. Now I know the Haitian community feels some sort of way, but I commend them for actually criticizing and speaking truth to power of their Haitian leaders. Because in the black community, sometimes we don't do that to our detriment. For example, certain black leaders could be a thousand percent wrong, but all I have to do is say is God is on our side and they racist and they act us y'all and all the black people don't do anything. That's why I believe gun violence is so high because our people don't correct or chastise or secure or discipline on people. They wait and cry for somebody else to do it, but then they get mad when somebody cleans their house and they're not home. And so the house is not the way they want it. And then hmm. they can turn on the person that cleaned it. You know what I mean? But if it cleans your damn self, but well, that's a deeper issue. But brother, hopefully that answers the question. But I'm solution-based. As you see, I put the information out there, uh, the resources out there, the funding out there, the Black Bank out there, the Black Federal Credit Union out there. It's up to you. The people can only control, the people, people can only change what they can control. And the first thing to control is yourself. So you can eat all the greasy food and junk food and be obese, but you can't blame anybody in the world but you. And that's the most different thing that happens here. Because the same thing with the Haitian leaders. People want change, but people don't want to change. And that's the problem. Enough of me talking. Very good answer, Dion. L Larry Robinson Jr. Please chime in and then I will say my piece and then we'll be back to Dr. Pierre. Go ahead. No comment. Bro, I'm going to fight you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Larry, anything else? You're on mute, Larry. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of hard for me to chime in because that discussion was very New York based and me being Southern based. Yeah, I, Larry always like, oh, it's all about New York. Now it's your no, time. but listen, listen, you just made a point saying Brooklyn this over there. Haitian base, you said the Bronx was Spanish base. I'm Southern base. And like I said, my issue is going to always be, you know, not saying that New York just has that much more. I'm saying that when it comes to the up north region of the United States, there's far vast more resources than what we have down south. So, so I don't know. If let's, let's talk about this. Let's just, you know, because we try to identify a conglomerate tonight. I think Dion, well, give it up for Dion. He did a great job with his presentation. It wasn't. No more questions, right? Because right. no more questions, I won't tell you anything else. Real quick. Like, like, like even, like, I, let me say this real quick. Like, you want to know Dion. about, well, let's do this. Let's talk about the South or like for your community. Let's, let's pinpoint it because we're all black people here. Do you feel Who, like. Where, what, where are you? Where are you in the world, sir? In Virginia. Right now, I am, I am located right now in Richmond, Virginia. Please. I got family down there, sir. I got you. Okay, no, Dion, wait. You. Pause, Dion. So for the question that Dr. Pierre Exuma inquired about, do you feel that the Black community is also slighted? We can flip the script. Let's talk about it. The Black community is slighted nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10. Okay. That's automatic. Everything that we do, especially down here below the Mason-Dixon line, we bootstrap. If you don't know what bootstrap means, that means you coming out of your pockets. Mm. You robbing Peter to pay Paul. If you look at even as far as, I know we're we going to be on finance, but I want to also touch on education because that's that's a, a bigger piece to acquiring finance. If you look at the bottom seven schools academically, as far as education, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, these states, when you're coming out of school, you, it don't matter if you got straight A's. You got to take a graduation test ju just to graduate because the literacy is so low. So when I say we don't have the resources, like Dion just said, most of us are, don't have the, you know, the wherewithal, the economics, but down south, it's a it's, it's hundred times worse. Now, I know when 
people see when people look at the South and, and, and we have to get out of the closed mindset. When people think the South, because I'm from South Georgia, people only think Atlanta. Listen, right. Atlanta's, Atlanta's only one piece of Georgia. There's a whole big state that's suffering. Everybody can't run and move and live in Atlanta. When people think Florida, you know, they think really Orlando, Miami. Listen, everybody can't go live in these couple of places. You got a whole big state, just like in Virginia. We only have really three condensed areas. And the third area, I don't even count it. You got the Richmond area, which is central Virginia. You got the, you know, Tidewater region, which is like Virginia Beach. And then, quote unquote, you have the DMV area. But I don't even want to count that because that's more D.C. metropolitan area. So in Virginia, you really only have two places that have a specific amount of Black people where you still have a limited amount of resources. It's still limited. Absolutely. Very well said. Well, thankfully, uh, hold on, Dion, one second. For Thankfully, with what you just said, Larry, we have a number of people that are in different communities, especially in the South. So one of the things that I wanted to address, and I'm so glad we're talking about this, and I'm so glad Dion gave this presentation this evening, is because the ball is now in our courts. Back to what Dr. Exuma shared moments ago. For those that are watching on Facebook, welcome. This is the Economic Crisis Initiative, and we are in a crisis. For those that are watching on uh, Instagram, welcome. We I are in a say crisis. Don't forget to don't forget to circle back to Dr. Ashley because he was next. I I know Dion. I was gonna get back to that. Trust me, I'm not letting Dr. Ashley Pierre go anywhere. Um, with what I wanted to share was I was actually one of the leading agents, and y'all could say whatever you want, but when I found out what was going on in Brooklyn in regards to Dr. quote unquote Dr. Matthew Eugene. No, we're not naming names. Stop that. Yes, we are naming names. Oh Dion, my God. Relax. Hello? Relax. So with regards to Matthew Eugene, who is no longer a council member, he's not a borough president, obviously, because his record is so disgusting that he has not done anything for the people. And when I say that, I stand by my grounds. And I was one of the leading people that held a press conference in Brooklyn to show what was happening. Now, here's one of the things that happened in regards to Dr. quote unquote, Matthew Eugene. He stated that the people, now I want you guys to follow this on Instagram and Facebook, et cetera, wherever you're going to be watching this. He kept saying that the people did not have the know-it-all. He kept stating that they didn't have the resources to make accurate changes in their businesses, et cetera, so that they could present something to him that would be of a use or what have you to get this profit, the discretionary funds, which was $950,000 where he gave the black community 5,000. If I'm lying, double check for yourselves. I was the mean, excuse me, the, the person on the front lines in regards to that. Was it dangerous to put out this information? Absolutely. But the Haitian Times is the first person or the first entity that came out with this information. It hurt me to the core, because as you can see from Dion's presentation, we have a problem. The money is there, friends. We have the ideas, we have the teams, we have everything that we need. However, there's always some kind of red lighting situation. There's always some kind of no, because we don't have this, we don't have that or whatever. Instead of helping us to like figure out what those steps should be, they would rather, they would rather cancel us out totally and then come up with some BS later. Enough is enough. The money that is out there is actually from our taxpayer dollars, believe it or not. The discretionary fund that's out there funding is literally monies that we put and allocated into the pot. It's like this. I want you guys to imagine something. There's a fire. The, the community that we're referring to, the Russians, Jews, whatever it is that's collecting all this money, they're the ones putting the fire in the community. Then we have to call them to put out the fire. And then we have to call them again to rebuild the damn houses. Y'all see what I'm saying? Either way, the monies are circulating right back into their hands. For those that are gonna come back later and say I'm anti-Semitic, screw that crap because I'm not. I'm very forward in my speaking because this is sickening when we can't get anything. And you know what? We're owed a lot more than we're given and told. So with that being said, to answer Dr. Exuma, 
we have a systematic issue instead of them trying to help or help us get to where we need to go or even i'm not saying y'all have to give us anything but you mean to tell me you can't hire one person or a team in your office matthew eugene because you're not a doctor you mean to tell me you cannot hire a community or a liaison or somebody or a, a group to help negotiate and help facilitate plans and actions and let me close by saying this, because I know we're getting off topic a little bit, but this is on my heart to share. When I have visited Dr. Matthew Lee Jean, excuse me, he's not a doctor, okay? When I have visited Eugene's office, because I would always get invited to share what I was working on, et cetera, he never took the time out to really make me understand what I needed. So I am what you call prime example. I'm not talking out of my ass. I know what I'm talking about. When I came with all of my documentation, do, excuse me, documentations and different things that I was working on, he never told me what the next step was. I asked him for next steps and what we can do as a people because I'm so passionate. That's one. For number two, every time I've been in his presence or been in the office, he would have a team or like these little elderly Haitian people and people in the community coming to see him for assistance in his office in Brooklyn. But what's so interesting, four years, six years later, most of these people in his communities have lost their properties. They've lost their homes. They built 11 homeless shelters in the 40th district, 42nd district, whatever district that is. And there are buildings that are empty that are sitting in front of his office and throughout his community that are for those that have enough money to move in. What do you call it? Affordable housing, the hell. So when I tell you we have a problem, now here's how we can solve these issues one day at a time. With the information you all have now, they can't hide it anymore. They can't lie to us anymore. So with Larry being in you know, Virginia, you can have a team of people you could work with Larry, and you can get your squad together so that all of you that have these great ideas can go to your state senator, go to your assembly person, et cetera, and be like, yo, son, we know what's going on now. We're not stupid. We have these ideas and these businesses. What you going to do? Dr. Exima, you have the information. We have all of the documentations. We have the data. What we going to do? We're going to go get our money. And that's all I have to say for now. Yes, Larry, what did you have to say? I was going to say, you know, the same person that gives you the disease, they also give you the cure. That, that that's, that's, that's really what it is. Everything is a cycle. So, I mean, we see it. We see Every it. Day. We, just watch it. we watch it from a distance. And until we make the conscientious decision to say enough is enough and fight back, we're always gonna be in the situation that we're in. Does anybody agree with me or am I alone? I feel like people should agree with me, but okay. We agree. Thank you. All right. I feel really positive now that I've gotten that off of my chest because I literally hurt about this all the time. But now that we've talked about this, you all get it. We have the documentations, we have the data, they can't lie anymore. Now with these cycles coming up, and all of these new electeds, we got to hold them accountable. Dr. Ashley Pierre, you are up next. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I mean, listening to you and what? You're muted. Uh, yes, I'm going to try to be quick. Uh, number one, I wanted to uh, congratulate uh, Dion. Uh, for, for his presentation and uh, just connecting to what. Uh, give, and I uh, give you one second. Uh, okay. Uh, Ash, Ashley. Ashley. Fred, to so I want to get back to you, Fred, because I have a question. I, I want to know if, if you are the Fred president that I know. <laughs> so that, that was my second uh, topic. So wait, you want to say something? Fred? Go ahead, Fred. You were saying you know Dr. Ashley. I, I'm confused. What? Do you guys know each other? Yeah, this is uh, my friends. Are... Oh, hello. Did I lose my sound? This is my classmate. This is my, that's my classmate, sixth grade to twelve. Oh. To 12. 
Fred, Dr. Ashley, you have your friend here. Fred Joseph is your friend. Yeah, yeah. classmate, six to is, 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 is it Fred Joseph, the one I really know? <laughs> Ashley. The big Fred, Fred. Don't worry, Fred. We're gonna be talking later on, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then, okay. Then okay. Then uh, then I'm gonna see Boom. Just Fred Joseph, really. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's you, definitely. Okay. I'm perfect. So happy, man. Thank you, Anaya. Okay. Uh, so what I was trying to say is that uh, connecting with Ferguson or Largerson, LA. LA Robinson. 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 Yes. So two things. Uh, yes, sir. Number one is that uh, Dion talk about SBA. SBA is for everybody, wherever you are. And I've been promoting SBA uh, to make people aware of what SBA is here in Miami. And then a lot of people didn't even know about SBA. There are a lot of funds out there. You just have to create a project and build that project in a way that you can get the loan. And they're actually giving the loan out. There's so much money seated out there. A lot of people don't even know how to get that money. So we can, I, I encourage you, Dion, to, to, to promote that aspect so that people can, uh, can take benefit out of it. Uh, other thing is uh, what uh, Robinson said about disadvantage our community with a lot of disadvantage. We know that already. There are many things that we know of. Uh, my, my, my posture is that we, we redirect the conversation. So what are the opportunities? What can we do to no longer be left behind? Okay, we've been left behind, we know that. So what can we do today? What do we have, as uh, Anaya said, that we can take advantage of? To move forward because now is the time to start moving forward. So a lot of opportunity out there, and people can complain, people can fight. Of obviously we have to be a little aggressive. So if yes. we're not aggressive, then you know uh, we will always like be be in the victim uh, uh, position. Absolutely. So, uh, sorry, Dr. P about sorry, Dr. Ash. Dion will be right back. He's on a call. He's listening to everything. He'll be right back. So continue. Okay. All right. Dion. So another thing is uh, besides those opportunities that are out there for people to, to find and to create wealth and, and a, a better way to live, we have cryptocurrency. We have the stock market. So I am all in in the stock market. And as you know, uh, and I had the one that I sent you the other day, it already went up again. It's on phase six. Now wow. it's at 25 cents. The port network. So we have. You, you're unmuted. Okay. You, 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 you're muted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We just have to open our eyes and then, and then get everything we can find. We are in the United States and we're not in Haiti. We need to build Haiti, but we need to be someone here first. Okay. The latest number that I found that is the best for Haiti to change in the next 20, 25 years, it's $1 trillion. Wow. $1 trillion is the least that we need to make some change, some significant change in Haiti. Well, we have to find the money right here, where, 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 where all the money is seated in the US. <laughs> okay, that's all I wanted to say for today. Thank you. That is, we're right on the same page. And that's why I'm so glad you're here. And in regards to the cryptocurrency, um, please give them a little bit more because for those that don't know what cryptocurrency is, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't know because we have people watching on Instagram and on Facebook. Dr. Pierre, Dr. Ashley, excuse me, Pierre, please let people know a little bit more about the cryptocurrency world and why it's important to look into it. Well, I'm going to uh, just say for today, if we want to have a, a meeting with that, for that, we can schedule it, okay? Uh, it's not something that you can just spread out and then just go in crypto and then a lot of people are saying, yes, it's the crypto, and let's go in there. And then people are losing a lot of money as well because they don't really know, they don't get it. Uh, so we need to, if we're going to present 
about the crypto, we need to do it in a, in a, in a very, uh, uh, I mean, very suitable way, you know? Absolutely. But for, the, for those that don't know, not even the bare minimum, because what I just want people to know is we will come back, but just for the bare minimum, cryptocurrency is... Cryptocurrency is the future. There you is, go. The, is, the, is the new, what, what we call the big financial revolution that is taking place right now under our nose. If we miss it, just remember, as Black people, we have missed everything. We miss the industrialized revolution. We miss the scientific revolution. We also miss the technological revolution, okay? The financial revolution, we shouldn't miss it. It mm. is happening. It is happening, but we have to compile all those revolutions, the great revolution that took place around the world and to understand what is a revolution. And then the financial one that is taking place right now, if we benefit from it, we can, we can uh, let's say, catch up. We can catch up with everyone that, was so far uh, ahead. We can catch up right now. We can make it as a community, as a population, and as the people that have been left behind for so long. So the financial revolution is through uh, the crypto exchange revolution, okay? So if we understand what crypto is and how it works, then we can benefit from it. Thank you, Dr. Ashley Pierre. Does anybody have any questions or concerns for Dr. Ashley? Because he just shared so much. Besides Fred Joseph, um, <laughs> his longtime friend. That's amazing. Let me just tell you guys, I love when this happens, by the way. Sorry, Larry. When I'm able to utilize God's grace and mercy to bring the people back together, amen. <laughs> Larry, go ahead, Larry. I wanted to uh, respond to Dr. Uh, Pierre. I, I appreciate his comments because he made he made a valid point. Now, he said he was located in Miami, right? Correct. He's located in Miami. Dr. Yes. Ashley, yes. Yes. yes, yes, right. So, the, so if you notice when I spoke, I, I I wanted to exclude Miami and Orlando. It's a reason for that, right? Because when we look at the South major cities. I excluded them for a reason. When you look at cities like St. Augustine, Florida, right? I don't know if anyone knows where that's at. Yes. St. Augustine, Florida is was the very first city in America and it was also an all-black community at one point. It is still 94% black. That's that's public knowledge. Mm. All right. Now when you come up to Georgia, there's a community called Sandersville, Georgia. It's right below Augusta, Georgia. 89% African-American community. Wow. All right. Now, when you go up to South Carolina, there's a community in South Carolina. Um, it's close to Buford. That's that's where you got the Geechee Gullah culture. Yep. That community is 92% African-American. All right. When you go up to North Carolina, there's a community right outside of Raleigh, which was known as the original Black Wall Street before Tulsa. That community is 96%. African American. When you come up here to Virginia, right below Richmond, and you look up the statistics for Petersburg, Virginia, it is 94% African American. All of these predominantly, uh, predominantly African American communities I just named are also some of the most uh, poor communities in the United States because a lot of Black people have open businesses tried to open businesses, tried to apply for these SBA loans. Trust me, I talk to people. They tried to even do the PPP thing. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, when you apply for these loans, right? Now, this is why I exclude major communities. When you're in these major communities like the Miamis, the New Yorks, the, the Los Angeles, the Dallas, Texas, the Orlandos, you're in a melting pot. So it's not as much, now, I don't wanna say segregation or Racism. racism everywhere. You can say it. But but when you go to these other communities, trust and believe they will do something to deny you. If you got if you have a business and you and you have a felony, they'll try to say, well, the felony affects this, this, and this. 
They true enough. They do put out funding. I do know people who have received the funding, but when you go to these other communities, and, it, and it's supposed to be a federal mandate, but they will do whatever they can to stop you from getting the funding. Trust me, St. Augustine, Florida was an affluent black area. They're not giving all them black people money. Sandersville, Georgia was an affluent area. They're not giving all them black people money. Hmm. Petersburg here so, is a quick area they not giving all the black people that money a couple of words brother so the the impact on us uh, and you could see it in many black folks communities the impact on us the direct impact on us is that we don't even know or we don't even want to demand what is owed to us or what is due to us because we already know that is going to be a battle so that's that's another issue on itself so that's why empowering our folks is really important. Mm -hmm. So this job that what, that you all doing is really important because we have forgotten and it's no longer within our genes to ask, demand, force and fight for what we need. This has to change as well. Hold on a second, uh, if I can, if I may. Go ahead, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Welcome uh, people, I don't know who people uh, is. Welcome people. Robinson, Robinson. Robinson, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. Man, exactly. I heard what you said when you mentioned clearly the big city, the difference between the big city and the, and the little one. I mean, it, it so happened. It did happen also in the, in the big, big city. For example, in Miami, in little Haiti, I have known people that did not know how to apply and did not know how to create a project, okay? Mm. And few of them send the application, fail to follow up with the application, and then they never get any response because they did not follow up with the request that was placed onto them. So I did seminar in uh, Port St. Lucie, in Port Charlotte, and uh, in, in, in other area like Homestead. What is happening is we're not getting, like you said, the level of education is so low that people have a brain and they don't want to use it. Use your brain to search for the information and to fight to get what is available. If I tell you it is available, it is available. So let me, let me, let me give you an example. Uh, you have the possibility to say, okay, why am I not getting any response? Why am I not getting this phone? Is it because I'm black, for example? Put it out there, put it out there. And then you will get a response. It is not a law in this country to discriminate against no one. So if you feel like you've been discriminated against, just say it out loud, shout it, and then let's see what happens, okay? So my point is, until we get there, we cannot keep saying that they don't want us to succeed. They don't want us to, to benefit. And other, some people in the SBA are, are black people. They are black people. So it's not a very, it's not a, it's at that level, I can say that because I've been through it for the last year. Since mm. COVID started, I've been helping. I, I even have a friend in, 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 in New York that was starting a business. And then I said to him, man, I mean, he was trying to get money. And then I said, man, go, go apply for a loan. That's what you do. You don't get people, you don't ask people for money to, be, to show the business in this country. This is not Haiti, okay? <laughs> so this is the U.S. Go get a loan. That's okay. It. Every single dime that I've been using in this country for the last 15 years since I came here, I mean, I took it from people, from, from, from o, 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 OPM, <laughs> other people's money, okay? <laughs> other people's money. So open up our eyes and get out of the situation where we find ourselves in. This and, is my advice. And with that being said, we have a new member, Mr. People. Mr. People's here. Um, please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm not speaking. I'm, yeah, I'm not speaking very well, but um. <laughs> no problem, no problem. He doesn't speak very well English, but we are gonna um share that Mr. People is here anyway, and I believe I know Mr. People through Dr. Ashley. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's correct. 
Okay, perfect. All right. So thank you, Dr. Ashley. Great observations. Larry, one second. Let's go back to Dion who, um, hold that thought, Larry, please. Dion it, is back. All right. So I've heard a few things here. Now let's talk about the SBA. There are Black people that work there. One of my contacts for SBA works there. But unfortunately, I believe the Black people that work there, they don't really know what's going on. In the sense that they are promoting Kool Aid to us sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, like, you know, get your 8A and get your certification, come to this workshop, blah, blah, that kind of outreach. But the system is not designed for us because it's not created for us. Case that in point, part. I'm going to show something right now on the screen that's very important, that's irked me, that I'm still trying to apply for. Okay. Now, it's called the Community Navigator Grants. And I've been harping on this because this shows how the system is designed, not really for us sometimes. And let's go back. I'll start with the PP uh, story for um, Dr. Ashley. So you're absolutely right. Your people, Haitian people, have a drive that my people have been so hurt, traumatized that we don't trust. We don't even try anymore for generations. Out. So, well, let's not focus on the money, Anaya. Let's focus on the root of the problem, which is the mindset. Me, I'm from slave stock, as it were. And a lot of people I know will hope to start a business or a nonprofit, but they don't, they lost all hope in these kind of things. Because like the man said, we don't get it, we try. But we have to keep pushing. Number one, like the gentleman said, paperwork. A lot of black people under the brother are scared of paperwork. Number two, the trust. We don't want people to know that we don't file taxes or report for our entire revenue in a tax form. And the, the government, they love asking these questions, right? And so the next thing is that when you get to this level, you don't be scared to ask for help. Right, amongst your own peers and some of these programs, SBA, SBC. So this is a this is the grant right now. But the thing is, a lot of people, businesses come here, black businesses or whatever, and say, well, it's good money. So back to the PP, a lot of black people in the hood took advantage of it, but the wrong black people. There were scams galore. Single mothers were getting the PP loan. People who just came home were getting the PP loan. And that ruins us for the rest of us. Then the big boys got the PP loan because they helped write their freaking application. But Biden, these people keep trying to spread it out. And this is an example, $100 million navigator program. So let's go to the description of this in the article, right? If you read the article here, okay, um, I'm actually going to go to a deeper article, the community navigator program. And this is the program overview, okay? Basically, the community navigator program is what this freaking committee is doing, which is outreaching to small black and brown businesses in areas the government can't touch. Oh my so God. So a, I wait, think wait, Anaya, let's not focus on this. Let's not focus on this. Just make your notes and put it in your, but anyway, this is not designed for black businesses. This is designed for nonprofits, faith-based organizations, and people like SCORE and SBS, that's DC. But the point is this, the deadline was extended to next week, y'all, because not enough minority businesses are applying or minority nonprofits are applying because they don't even know it exists and they find out they can't do it because they don't have a Sam's account or a Dove's number or a cage code. I know what that is. I paid 10 grand for a class, government contract to know what that is. But if you're a black nonprofit, you won't know about government contracting and these um, things you have to apply for. And once again, look right here, the same programs, SBDC, Women's Program, Veteran Outreach, all these entities that don't do much for us. Long story short, this is an example of what people should apply for right now. That's nonprofit. Okay, because the government doesn't have enough capacity to do all this work. So they get nonprofits to do it. And it's a tax write up for them because they don't pay taxes on these nonprofits and it becomes a racket sometimes. Anyway, so I tell people all the time, like these people on the, the, the call right now, Zoom, we are all gatekeepers. And sadly, but sure, they give the money to people that they think are gatekeepers or should be gatekeepers to get access. So people like us need access to leadership, ownership, and capital. This right here encompasses all three. Just like when the census money came out for outreach, I got that grant money in those contracts. Right now, the COVID vaccine outreach. I applied for the COVID vaccine outreach grant money. You may not be for it, but still, it's money to have access to ownership, leadership, and access to capital to control these things in the community instead of your $15 an hour job doing the outreach. So this is an example. Hopefully, uh, Dr. Ashley can appreciate it. For me, I'm the other side of the bootstrap story where it's like, I don't dwell on the racism, most things. I keep pushing forward. If it's racist, I keep going. I might call it out, I might put a complaint, but there's always a thousand other doors to go to. 
And on the same token, a white guy told me something very interesting. He's a he's a a, 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 a boxing coach and a boxing trainer. So his gym, of course, there's a lot of minorities in it as they box and train, or whatever. He said, Dion, anytime a black person comes to tell him an old white guy about all this, you know, reparations and the world's against them, he said, right. But on the same token, on the opposite side of the coin, there's always a white person that will help you. White guilt is real, and black people should find opportunities to use that to their advantage. All the scholarship money that's designed by white black people, go for that. All the white people like me that have that white guilt that want to go the extra mile to see you succeed, you use that as your focus. Target those white people. Don't worry about all those racist cops. There's always another cop that's not racist that will extra succeed if you just introduce yourself. It can be black like you. But anyway, so it's two sides. It's the racist white side, and then there's the positive white side that wants to make you succeed. Back to PPE, um, Dr. Ashley and Beyond. Oh, I'll, I'll even say it, the Jews, because Larry's big on loving the Jews, right, Larry? Because Jesus was a Jew, right? So the Jews in New York City, if you want to target a demographic, <laughs> they actually, they actually, a lot of people from that community, I can admit, that prey on homes in Brooklyn, they actually came over to those schemes. They said, hey, we'll apply for this PPE loan for you, uh, uh, Black-owned business, or whatever the case may be, but we want 30%. We can get you $100,000. So, of course, somebody agreed to 30% of $100,000. Next thing, yo, fraud down the line. Now, to the gentleman's point about um, the Haitian politician. Well, that Haitian politician that I won't name, don't forget that guy is still in office until January. And maybe between now and then, whatever budget he has and whatever guilt and shame you gave him, reach out to the man and say, hey, if you want to make an impact and go out with a bang, this is the way to go with bang, give that money and resources to the areas it needs to be. And so that's what I'm gonna give you guys, the community navigating program grant monies. And don't be scared of paperwork, apply. Even though your paperwork's wrong, still apply anyway to learn the process and keep going, keep trying. Thank you, Dion. Such great information. And let me just say, even if that, I'm not gonna use a curse word to describe that guy, but even if he did have the know-it-all and the community to stand up. I don't think he would do it. He already went and told people, Anaya hates me, boo-hoo-hoo, he's crying. Kick rocks with no shoes on, buddy. Okay, let this message go to him because at the end of the day, you know I hate you and you haven't reached out, not to me or my team or nobody to say, how can I make things right? So maybe this message will get to him. I don't need anything from him because I'm building every day. So this is why I do what I do so I can help my community. Unlike that council member and the others that don't give a damn about the people. Well, okay, well now can I ask something to that? Because I believe um, the other, um, hello, Dr. Hello. Pierre had a question. And- Larry um, wanted I to wanna, speak as Wait, 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 you got oh. on mute. You got on mute. Who's on mute? So, you're not on mute, we're hearing your conversation. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's the, the Zoom etiquette that has it for. But anyway, <laughs> so the other, um, uh, Dr. Pierre asked a question about how can we solve the problem? Because like I said before, the two things, civics and then economics, right? Not either one, right, without the other. But civics is most important because to have the ability to create and change the rules is the most powerful tool the man has in the world. So to fix that problem, I encourage everybody to run for something in life. Run for office, run for school board, get involved. Politics, civics, Politics and government meet at civics. So it's up to you to be involved. This is not a spectator sport. Don't vote and walk away and expect the world to be a better place. You have to take a leadership role in the community, either as an elected official or a pro bono elected official like myself, I'm a county committee man, or a pro bono elected official like a school board representative. And that's the first step, access to leadership, right? Then. Try to become, get the capital. Once you have access to this realm of politics, you'll see, you get a certain email list, a community board list, a school board email blast. You see all the each resources, amenities, and funding that come out, but don't trickle down the street because the people it goes to don't do their job to hit the streets. Grandma so-and-so sits on the school board, but does she bring home all those flyers that's on the back table with all the information and resources that go on and tell the world uh, five block radius? Most of the time, no. So that's the next thing, access to leadership, access to capital, and the third component is access to ownership. So many people own property, own properties. If you live in a box like me, call an apartment, think about getting a property. 
how to invest in these things. That's what this platform is for, but at 9A. And um, yeah, ownership, own where you live. Have a business to own where you work. You know, you could you could, you could start an after school program. You can start your own daycare. A lot of people do those kind of um, side things. But thing that our people are afraid of that we can work with as a tool is paperwork, okay? You know, invest in yourself. I invested a payment plan for $10,000 for this government contracting class. So I see most of the tricks because this white guy wants me to succeed. He loves class with me and my other guy. He's like, this now I want to make the class around you. I'll make you succeed. Now, when I see these RFPs and this government funding, I can see through all the holes and what they're trying to do, right? I know what certification to get. He said, Dion, your business model is simple. All the Black-owned businesses have to come through you to get the government contracts and the grants because you know everything. The big time business owners need you because with your minor certifications, they want to subcontract you to make sure your certifications get them access to all the money that's earmarked for all the minor businesses with certification. The SBA needs you, Dion, because you are the gatekeeper to bridge for all the gaps. The, the feds love compliance. They give money away for free. The military budget wastes money for fun. And I told you a story about that before. But yeah, SBA is going to need you, Dion, to bridge the gap to make sure all the minor um, businesses that come through are in compliance so all their scorecards of giving the money and contracts to minor businesses are in the plus, if not more so in the green. So yeah, I know, hopefully this is um, some words of encouragement to get involved with the civics in your local community. Either find out who's on the liquor board. You know what I mean? Some of stuff like that that interests you. Yeah. And access to local economics. Back to Naya. Thank you, Dion. Such great information. This is why we do what we do here live every week. I could be asleep. I could be at the club shaking my booty. I could be doing something else. But I love all of you. I know that's a lot. Um, I love all of you. And I love the information that we're distributing because I'm really passionate about our community. Because let me tell you something. I heard a statistic or some information a while ago, whereas it said the white family household economically was making... 170,000 a year annually, and the black community was making, I wanna say 17,000. Now, the numbers could be a little off because it's been a while, wait Dion, hold on, hold on. And then in 20 to 30 years, black people will be at a zero. We have to stop this thing from happening. I cannot be who I am, have this information and not be able to share it. Larry or Dion, back to you or anybody else. I don't know who else wanted to say something. All right, well, we lost one of the, um, Dr. Pierre, Dr. Ashley's still here, Fred Joseph is here, and Mama Brenda's here. Yeah. But um, yeah, so the, the, the show continues to say, but me, all those things you mentioned are not in the forefront, forefront of my mind. There might be 2% here in the back, but, you know, keep pushing, always find a different avenue. Doors may be closed by a white man, but then again, like I said, the same side of the coin, doors will be opened by the white man. And because you know, of that white girl. But that still doesn't mean you have to do your due diligence to navigate that. Because sometimes that white girl can be an indirect or direct means of control and manipulation in order to save your world, to make it more like their world or their vision of your world. You see what I'm saying? And so, that's always- And, and um, I want people to know, I'm not racist. I'm not anti-white. I'm not none of that. Just to let you all know, I put out this information in a black and white scheme because that's what we deal with every day. Trust me, white people have open doors for your girl and I, A. But at the same token, I see the racism and I've experienced it, okay? And I'm not going to go into my life well, story now. I so. want to add something here that maybe because you got people on the ground in Miami and so forth, is that there's a lot of trouble in the world that, you know, we need to carry on. For example, my people in South Africa are going through the summer oh issue. They just, do their, they just do their president in jail. Um, right now, Haiti's having this problem with the Haitian president being assassination. And now locally, Cuba's having problems because... One of the things people have realized about Cuba, realize that the problem with Cuba is this. The reason why Obama, you know, said whatever about Cuba is cool now, and then Trump's like, now nah, I've got to hate Cuba. If you approve Cuba as a country in the Western Hemisphere that actually took stuff from white people. And when Castro took over, all these properties and menaces, all these people in Florida and beyond, they want the key word that they sold from black people like everybody else does, they want reparations. So now all the Cubans and Cubans of sense that's resentful for the island of people in Cuba, they want to try to do any kind of thing possible to get that island back, to get their reparations for all the properties and monies that were taken from them. So I just want to put that here, you know, we have to all pay attention internationally at some times because a lot of information is not getting to us on our internet. For example, I have to have somebody on the ground at Haiti or an IA to right. tell me 
or somebody in South Africa telling what's going on. So totally whatever. understandable, but let's focus because we can't do anything internationally unless locally, again, we have what we need here. So that's why I don't get too deep into the politics and the international thing. We'll talk about that offline for sure. But for ECI, we cannot even delve into that right now, especially in regards to Haiti. I refuse to say another thing publicly about Haiti because the situation is disgusting and messy. Larry, back to you. I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Pierre. You know, he definitely hit on a lot of points. I don't disagree with nothing he said. Um, I'm gonna get on you, Dion, a little bit because you're not gonna put me in the box to the Jew. But Anaya, I want you to, I want you to give that number that you gave earlier in the recording. You said there was a certain number of money for funding, but how much money did Black people actually get? In regards to, oh yes, nine hundred fifty thousand. So nine hundred fifty thousand is the actual total number that was the number that was the for budget. discretionary the funds. Budget. Yes, okay. for discretionary funds was 950,000 and I'm going to send some I'm going to give you some other facts. 950,000 and 5,000 was allocated to the Black and Caribbean community. I say Black and Caribbean because sometimes there's a little discre uh, discrepancy, a little difference, but it's Black people irregardless. So that's a huge problem. And then let's go to Farrah Lewis. Let's go to this uh, councilwoman Farrah Lewis, where she had 1.4 million dollars. Okay. One Point four million, and I want to say less than one hundred thousand was allocated. Well, keep in mind that Miss Farrah Lewis won her uh, election, so you know let's all that has to nothing it. to do with the how, statistics. How, how much was allocated? How much was allocated to Black and Caribbean people? I want to say less than one hundred. I have to double check her statistics because here's the caveat with that: less than a hundred thousand. So here's the caveat: Farrah Lewis always also try to beat me up when she thought I was going against her, when I had nothing negative to say about her because her statistics did not come out yet. We didn't even know that Farrah was allocated 1.4 million and less than 100,000 was given to black people. So you could only imagine this whole situation is so disgusting. For those that are watching, I can publicly say all of this because there's records, there's conversations, there's video clips and the police also have the street where all of this went down. Now I gotta ask, this money that was allocated, because I, I don't know New York exactly. Go you know, ahead. Politics. Yes, sir. Is, is, is this for a borough, for the city, or for the whole state? For I'm just trying to get an understanding. District, for the district. So let me break it down for you, because I'm glad you're asking okay. these questions for those that don't understand. And this goes to anybody that's watching and listening. Every district in New York is allocated funding called discretionary funding. How do I know? Because I was one of the people that helped distribute discretionary funding throughout the Bronx under a council member who's now, I guess, a congressman by the name of Richie Torres. When I first heard about this money, literally, I was like, what the hell is this? Because in South Florida, where I was hailing from, even though I'm from New York, I never heard of discretionary funding because typically Black people don't have access to this freaking information. But I'm not going to go too hard. I'm going to say it like this. When I found out about this discretionary fund, right? Monies over a million dollars are broken down to different communities in the schools, in businesses, for the roads, for projects. It goes on and on the list, okay? A lot of people don't even know that I know all of this stuff because I don't tell people everything I know. So when I saw that happening in our communities, Richie Torres actually helped distribute the monies very well. Speaking of Richie Torres, I believe Vanessa Gibson also did a great job with hers. I mean, all throughout the board in the Bronx, the people were doing their thing because that's where I'm at. I'm uptown. I'm between Harlem and up, up, uptown Bronx or whatever. For Brooklyn, I don't hail in Brooklyn anymore. I was born there, but I'm not raised out there like that. So I never really touched Brooklyn until I started to go back into Brooklyn to deal with certain people. Long story short, it was brought to my attention that Matthew Eugene had an article written about him in regards to this $950,000 situation. Now, I want to also share again publicly, every time I've been in this man's office, bro, like I used to cry about this. This is not something that started yesterday. This is months. I would watch all of these little Haitian women and men sick with little canes, sitting on wheelchairs and stuff, coming in to ask this bastard for help. 
for help, son. Like literally. And he had a truck outside of his damn office set up with legal help. Funny enough, not even funny, sad enough. Here I am a few years out. Cause again, I don't live in the district. So I'm not paying attention like that, right? I'm looking at the statistics and the numbers and I'm like, wait a minute. If Matthew had this truck every day sitting outside of his office talking about some legal help and representation, housing, blah, blah, blah. Why the hell is half of his population homeless now? Where that information went to and who the hell you was helping, Matthew? Bruh, don't get me started. Let's go back to the facts. So Haitian Times came out with the story. Okay, I could get you the article, whatever. When it was brought to my table, because you know I'm the activist in the community that I don't give a damn, like I'm gonna talk about it, right? They were like, Anaya, did you know about this? And I'm like, nah, like what? And he could not even fight it. He didn't even try to fight it. Because if somebody, right, try to help somebody, okay, like somebody like himself, they would have came back and said, nah, this is what I did. Let me show you some of the information, Anaya, because we know you're going to talk. You're going to share this with the world. You're going to go on the news and say no justice and no peace. Let me share with you, Anaya, before you open your big mouth that I tried. None of that happened. Matthew Eugene has my personal cell phone number. We text, we talk all the time. Like I said, I'm always down there like trying to see what's going on in the community, what we can do. Long story short, again, fast forward. Not only did he not try to share any information, he tried to cover up the story afterwards when he had some people come to his office, a news camera team or whatever, who didn't even fall for the crap because they saw it for themselves. They were like, ah, we get it. Anaya, you ain't bugging. And then Farrah Lewis attacks me in thinking that I'm going against her. But now here's the caveat on that. Sis, I didn't even have nothing against you. I never said anything negative about this councilwoman. Matter of fact, I helped elect her. I was there for her. But when her documentation came out, $1.4 million, I was done. I was like, so that's why you're trying to fight a sister? You try to jump me, me. I'm from Brooklyn, son. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know, you don't know me like that, right? Whew. Now, now I want to ask, how many people are in Matthew Eugene's district? Dion. Do you have Dion will be better able to answer that one. Go ahead, Dion. Or Fred Dion, Joseph. This is a very sensitive topic that I think we should, you know, switch gears and segue. To I mean, it's, it's listen, this is ECI. I thought this was about the economic crisis initiative. It is, it is. That's you can't be spreading crisis. rumors and gossip because Dr. Dr. Matthew Eugene told me when I asked him what was going on, he said that the people don't understand how it works. And, you know- so First of all, this is not gossip and this is not rumors. Yeah. This is legit facts that we're talking about. And I would never open my mouth to say anything against anybody if it was not the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. This is the Economic Crisis Initiative. Welcome Johnson Legrand for joining us. So let Matthew tell you- Okay, well, you want to do it. Uh, watch this, watch this. So far in that district, Brooklyn actually is the biggest borough uh, by geographics, right? That's right. And Brooklyn, you know, has X amount a million of people. So yes, there's a lot of Haitian position, but this is about solutions, right? And so I got to bring back the solutions. So what's the solution? My question for Mrs. Nia is, who was the person that won the Democratic primary? to replace Dr. Matthew G. Who is that? Let's not refer to him as doctor, and his name is Reynaldo Diaz. No, wait, Re oh. Reynoso. He's he's Dominican, which is crazy. Because no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before, before we get into that internal strife, he has been elected a Democratic candidate for Brooklyn Borough President. I'm asking you, who's the person that won the city council primary for Dr. Matthew G's district? That's the next person that has that money. Oh, yes, Rita Joseph, I think. If I'm not mistaken. But once you find out who that is in yeah. order to move past these grievances, find out who that is now and work with her or, or her or them or whatever. So, so that here's is. the thing. So here's the thing. Let me tell you something. Um, please mute your phone, Mr. Johnson Legrand. When it comes to politics, like I said, what I can do is what I'm doing here. I can't go back and forth <laughs> in Brooklyn when I live uptown. That's one. They <laughs> have to do it. And the yes. people in their district need to have the information. I'm doing my part. For those that live in that district, call Rita Joseph. Y'all know her number. 
she's actually a very good person. She cares for the people. She won because she's actually about the business and about mm -hmm. making changes, effective changes. Now, this is the thing about politics. Um, and then we're going to close out this subject and move forward, please, if that's okay. Um, in regards to politics, a lot of people coming into politics already having signed some deals, some certain things behind closed doors, under the table, etc. I'm not going through all of that. All I can say in regards to uh, making a difference in solutions, people, you know who you are, you know your conscience, make a difference, be better. For those business owners or those individuals, community leaders, etc., that have access to the information that want to help your brother and sister, put out your information now. That's why the Economic Crisis Initiative has started and we do find solutions for people. I have people that watch me and watch us and they come back to me and say things like, Anaya A, you don't even know. After I heard what you said about the cryptocurrency, after what, I, what you said about you know the AMC stock, I jumped on it and I just made bank. So at the end of the day, Mr. Larry Robinson, he is now a partner with the travel business that we have. He's making his money. He's about to book cruises. I don't want to put his business out there, but he has booked cruises and he's doing great work. Dr. Ashley Pierre, we thank you for joining us and we'll let you know um, more information about the next meeting. He has to run off, but he will be visiting us, is visiting us excuse me, in New York City very soon. And I'm excited about that. So I want you all to know that this is very solution oriented and we will make effective change. Nothing happens overnight. Don't get it twisted. But now that a lot of these secrets have been uncovered, it's up to us to make a difference. Johnson Legrand, you just joined us. Would you like to say anything, please? Because we can hear you, but we can't hear you. I'm going to put him on mute. Sorry, Mr. Johnson. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, so with that being said, we're about to close out in a few minutes. Does anybody have anything else that they want to share? Um, thank you, Larry, for asking those questions and asking me to repeat because I'm very passionate and these are not rumors, nor is this libel or defamation of character. I didn't put the article out. It was the Haitian Times that started the trend and I'm happy that I was a part of exposing the truth to the masses. Thank you. I, I want to ask Dion something because he is heavily involved in the politics. And you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to rag on Everybody, New York. I'm just, welcome. you know, New York is the mecca of everything. everything. But I got to ask, I got to ask Dion. Now, as far as these public offices, because, you know, us as black people, we like to, we, you know, us that, you know, descend from slaves. We like to always say, well, when the government going to give us our 40 acres and a mule, when we going to get these reparations? Now, do you believe that as far as going to voice our opinions to the highest office in the land? meaning like the federal government, the president, whoever you have you, or should we start in the local, you know, county and city offices and move to the state? I mean, what's your opinion? Since you are a solution-based guy, what route should we go? The cliche in the game is all politics is local. Since you're in Richmond, Virginia, do you know who your city councilman is? I know who a couple people on the council are. Yes, I do. Well, who represents you? Uh, no one, to be honest. All right. The district that you live in, who is the city council person? I actually live in like three different districts, so I, I can't say. <laughs> who are those three people? If you can't answer that question, then hey. I, I, I don't. I don't. Well, then I that's don't. a part of the thing that we need to work on. So once homework. you know those answers. That's your homework, Larry. Then once you know those persons, email them, call them, go to their office and say hi. What can you do for me? Just like you asked Dion, then come back to the show and let me know what happened. No, 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 no. Listen, I asked you a specific question. What is the question? You answered the question, but I, 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 I wanted. I, I asked you a specific question. <laughs> Tonight is not the night for you two to go back and forth with the mess, but we thank you. And Larry, that's your homework for next week. You will let us know, or even in our group. So get up your ass and let's make it happen. Dion, you are too funny. So I got family in Richmond, so I'm coming down to see you. Ready? 347-617-6873. 347-617-6873. That's our WhatsApp group message for all those that are interested in staying in touch with these people. Look, these are your friends. These are y'all brothers. I'm just the, the one that's on the sidelines like, yay, everybody. But y'all be nice to our new friends that are joining us. Um, so everybody, we are excited that we had this moment together. Fred, did you have anything else you wanted to say, Fred or Mama Brenda Doc? 
Johnson Legrand, let us know if you would like to say anything. For those that are watching on Instagram, thank you. For oh, I had some comments on Facebook, but this this conversation got a little heated and beautiful. I don't like to say uh, heated or you know dramatic or nothing. I like to say we had a great time talking. And for those that left comments, I apologize. Oh my God, there's twelve comments. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, sorry. We have a couple of minutes. I had no idea. I apologize. Good point, Dion. Clapping. I heard the bootstraps term before. Uh, good evening, beautiful people. Damn, that's sad. Um, limited amount of resources. Oh, that's sad. Limited amount of resources. Anthony Beckford, M. Betty Ebank says. Pamela Clark says, hello, everyone from Chittawaga, Buffalo, New York City, or New York State, actually. So I apologize, guys, that we're just now seeing these messages. Again, this was a great conversation this evening. We had a lot of people in the building and outside of the building um, on Zoom, and we planified to have a more, um, a more active community like this every week. Hold on one second, Larry. Um, thank you again for those. Darlene Armstead, uh, Pamela Clark, and Betty E. Banks, for those that are watching on Instagram, we thank you for your comments. Um, I can't answer each and every one of you, but if you all do me a favor and DM me, send a private message to me, I'll be sure to get back with you. I know a lot of you have your concerns and your questions that I'll be able to answer when we're offline. It's been a very busy day for your girl and IA, but as you know, we're here every week, every Wednesday night, starting at 6.30, sometimes at 7 depending on the nature of our uh, schedule and what's going on. Thank you to Fred Joseph for joining us, Brenda Doc, Doctors Pierre, both doctors, Ashley Pierre, as well as Dr. Pierre Exuma. Sorry for the confusion earlier. Thank you to Peter Pouchon of Caribbean Images TV. Thank you to the Honorable Dion J. Powell, MPA. Oh my God, Larry Robinson, Miss Zoe from the State Senator's Office, Miss Victoria Falk, and I feel like there were other people, you know, who spoke. Oh, thank you. Okay. The number is 347-617-6873. Go ahead and send a message. 347-617-6873. I feel like I've missed a couple of people in my, you know, shout outs and my thank yous. We have roughly seven minutes. Larry, back to you. All right, so one person that you missed was Dan. Dan was here earlier. Dan was here. But yes. I would like to know from the uh, the uh, the millionaire beside you, where can we get some of the passion products at? Oh, so oh, Pamela Clark dropping the mic. Pamela, you should be on here with us. Um, so the passion products are available through my girl Zoe, but you know what? I don't have that information. I will be sure to report back to you. And look, here's the passion product again. She makes soaps. She makes uh, uh, things for the hands, lotions. She makes facial products. And does, you know, she make, a, does she make does she make exfoliants? She makes exfoliants natural. Ooh, that's a like I like that word. It makes me feel clean. Awesome blossom. And you know what? Next week we're gonna have um, the follow up. So here are two products that I have in front of me, real quick, before I talk about next week's uh, homework. Larry Robinson. Okay, so here's passion product just like, number one. Just like, just like I gave Mimi some homework and look at how she turned. <laughs> she did well. She did. You know what? Y'all gonna leave Mimi alone. Shout outs to Mimi who's doing business with Haiti tonight. Woohoo! We love you, Mimi. So real quick, guys, we have right here. Um, this is passion product number one. I don't know why I'm calling it passion product because that's not what it is. It's lotion. It is lotions and it's pink passion. So you're halfway right, sir. And passion products. Okay. And it has black seed oil, flax seed oil, vitamin E, clove oil, rosemary, um, and beautiful fragrances. I'm not going to give you all the secrets. So that's passion product one, aka pink passion. And number two, and if anybody wants to advertise with the ECI, let us know. Dion already took the initiative, literally, with the economic crisis. Okay, it's the number again is 347-617-6873. 347-617-6873. Please take it down. My hands are tied up right now, um, but take down that number and send us a message on our economic crisis initiative. 347-617-6873. This is lemongrass and patchouli. And this one smells really good as well. Mm. Is Victoria still here? 
Victoria is here, but she's working on a call. As you know, we're busy, excuse me, busy business women. We're working hard. If you all are interested in the business of the traveling business that we're working on, please, please, please go to surge365.com backslash F-E-G-M-G-M-T. Again, 365.com uh, slash F-E-G. MGMT. I'll be sure to drop that information on the links and things of that nature. Anybody else want to say anything before we close out? Slow progress is better than no progress. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Anybody else? We have three minutes. Dion? Well, they may not represent you the way you want them to represent you, or you are independent, but know who takes the tax dollars within the box where you live and learn how it works. Don't ever vote. I don't care anymore. Just know how it works. Know where these monies are. Know where the resources are. Know who's who in education to get your kid into a good school. Know how to get your mortgage. Uh, for your house and your bank loans and stuff. Know where your black banks are, your black federal credit unions are, and keep pushing. Everybody has a lane and a role to play. Either far right, Candace Owens, Brexit, and those folks, or far left, Black Lives Matter and everybody else on the radical side. Everybody has a role to play for the agenda. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, don't be scared to ask, but take an action. Take okay? an don't action. just say the whole world's racist now. Forget me, y'all. But Make sure you be something productive for your people and yourself. Okay, keep in mind and stuff like that. Perfectly said. I'm sending that information for the travel business. You all have my information. I'm sending that phone number now that my hands are free. 347-617-6873. Please guys stay in touch. Let's work together as a collective. Hi, Exuma, Maxine, welcome. Um, you're watching the Economic Crisis Initiative, which goes right into the NIA show. So theoretically, you're a part of two different major platforms tonight. Let's stay in touch. We got a lot more work to do. We're live now with people watching on Instagram. Thank you so much. We've had like 30 people watching on Instagram. We've had, um, I think maybe like 100 already views on Facebook. I'm not sure, but we've gotten a lot of great responses and that's what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're doing really good on time. 9 p.m. Mama Brenda, would you like to say anything to close us out? Or Fred Joseph? Well, once again, it was a beautiful program, very knowledgeable. I'm telling you, you have some very good speakers and some very intelligent people. And I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here to listen in on this information. Thank you, Mama And I Brenda. hope everybody has a great night. You're the best. And real quick, we have a Haitian speaking I person. Got... Hold on, Rosa, real quick, Dion. Oui, me parle creole, comment nous y est? Okay, me bien content. Ou là avec nous, notre economic crisis initiative. C'est au projet na fait, na aide moun, chache kob na peyen. On va connaître côté oye, mais moi souhaite tout bagay en forme côté oye, okay? Haiti, c'est ça. Woo! Haiti, chérie, mais pas qu'un drapeau à couiner là, mais ma pas chasser. All right? Tant moi, un moment, nous n'avons fini là. Nous n'avons Facebook avec Instagram. By the way, for those that are wondering what I'm doing, I'm, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'm on several different platforms simultaneously. That's what we do. I didn't bring all my devices today. But... And they're pulling, they're pulling all the juices out of your, uh, your computer. But you see, Larry, he got off the line because I had something for him to beat him over the head with. So maybe you oh. come back on before I, you know, reveal it to the world. Okay, okay, Larry. I don't know what happened to Larry. Send him a message if you have his number. Fred Joseph, before we shut it down, what would you like to say, Fred Joseph, before we shut it down? Done with Umuma. Hello, Fred. We udi kisa. Okay. Wow. So, um, nous avons un petit problème avec connexion. So, we're shutting down. Écrim na inbox moi. All right, guys, we're shutting down. Present time, 9 p.m. Listen, I'm, I'm so excited. 
We did a great job tonight. Thank you, Dion, for the information and for the presentation. I see it in the inbox for those that don't have it. Dion, please do me a favor and also send it to me um, directly. So I, or if you want to put it directly on the Facebook page, that's fine too. What are you talking about? What you just shared. Oh, that stuff? Okay. I'm Google.com. It's all, it's what? Google.com search represents rich men. Oh, no, that was, that was for, that was for Larry. Because oh. I was trying to give Larry, you know, the answer, the open book test to his, um, who represents him. And that was very key because all politics is local. And I tried to, I did some of the homework for him by simply Googling who represents me, Richmond, Virginia. And all these wonderful links came out. All and right. I was going to show Larry that Virginia, Richmond, Virginia's veterans, Virginia, has its own political structure, um, which is this. And okay. there are city council candidates here that Larry should try to look up. These are all the council members there is in the little areas and their office locations and other elected officials. Because even in his area, I believe sheriff is an elected position. So sheriff, sheriff, you should know who your sheriff is. Vote them out because a lot of black people did that when somebody got shot a while back. So Larry, Larry, I can't wait to see what your civic engagement is like next week. Very good. I just sent him a message and hopefully he'll be jumping on it. Send that to me and I'll send that to him, please. Or put it right in our WhatsApp group. Well, we've done very well. And present time, 9.02 p.m. Fred, I don't know what happened to you, but for everybody, thank you so much. We did it, guys. And we will be back. And then hopefully we'll be doing some in-person meetings very soon. That's the next objective here. All right, guys. Good night, Dion. Good night, Brenda. Mama Brenda, good night, Fred, Joseph. Fred, we try to give you a chance to speak. I bet you you're away from your phone right now. Pas de problème, Fred. A plus tard. Good night, everybody. We love you. Bye. Good night.